ladies and gentlemen, we encourage you, if you have written testimony, we encourage you to leave that at this front desk so that it's submitted as official record. Okay? So if you have written testimony, please leave that. Okay? So next up, have one part. Yeah, excuse me. Just take a speaker. All right, excuse me. I'll be correct. Thank you very much. This is the second speaker. All right, good evening. I am a teacher at school, and I want to read something to you. I would like to thank CPS for having this meeting. In my heart, I know that this meeting is nothing more than lip service. I know that God has been passed. I know that this is not about children, but about power, egos, and big corporations. Which is not. But it is most definitely not about our children. Having said that, as far as what is worth, I add my two cents. I have been speaking for many years and know in my heart that I have made a difference in the lives of many children. And for that, I am grateful to God for calling me to this profession. I love the students and death and have truth. So when I heard that we were slated to be closed, I started looking into how this is possible. I know what the CPS data says. It says that we have been on probation for nine years. We are underutilized. But does the data point out to the fact that we have a high mobility rate and that many of our students come and go without loading? Does it say that we are surrounded by apartment buildings which are advanced temporary housing? Does it show that many of our children come from single parents, low income, high poverty, high crime, gang related, and high drug abuse areas? So is it a surprise that we have a low stores that we are unutilized? It's not to me. So you can close the school, but you can't close the home that controls of many of our children that we serve. The home that we try to fill every day with knowledge, patience, attention, and most importantly, love. Does it daily show that? I know that every day the teachers and staff that ask get 100 percent. I hope that one day we have it, we will be on probation and fully utilized. But that won't happen because of somebody, something we did inside the school. That that would be something that the power that we decide to do outside of the school. As I take my seat, I leave some other memory questions that I hope you'll be able to answer. Are you going to use our building? Where are our students going to be placed? How will we keep our students safe considering the gang issues in our area? Why is there such a disparity among the schools being closed in terms of location, ethnicity, and resources? Do you have any data that shows that private or and or charter schools significantly outperform Chicago public schools? And, and if I can make a suggestion, all the money that's going to turn it around these schools, why don't they use their money to turn around some neighbors? That would be a better thing of our children. Good evening, members of the committee, community. Uh, my name is Attorney Brandon Logan. I am the committee representative for Avalon Park. I've been a resident for Avalon Park for over 30 years. Avalon Park is one of the historic middle class African American neighborhoods in Chicago. I am speaking before you today to say, do not close one of the pillars of our community. Do not close Avalon Park. Similar to our city, state, and country, Avalon Park was not immune to the economic financial downturn. During this period, foreclosures, unemployment, and family stress increased in our community. To close Avalon Park would be premature in light of our due diligence to restore Avalon Park to the beacon of life it is to our community and to our city. I have three points briefly to support this position. First, our utilization numbers are misleading because we serve a significant homeless population. A homeless shelter is located within our community and serves several students utilizing our school when visiting the shelter. To close Avalon Park would deprive our homeless children of a school. 
and lead to possible violations of the Kennedy Veto Act. Second, Avalon Park is a performance art school. We want to strengthen this core purpose of our school with local community partners. For example, we create projects to paint art design that will come to foreclosed properties in our neighborhood. Allow musicians to teach our kids new music skills. View broadly our school body's CPS recent announcement and commitment to invest more in art curriculum. Third, our school has not had a chance to respond on its own accord to our current predicament. For example, our, pre our principal recently designed and set the position at King's College Prep. This is the first year we moved from a level two school to level one school. I believe Avalon Park can once again serve as an anchor of our community. In the coming weeks, we will demonstrate our commitment to Avalon Park. Our children need to know and understand when you fall in hard times, you don't give up. You work hard and you return twice as strong. The community wants the opportunity for Avalon Park to return twice as strong. Prior to practicing law, I taught fourth grade. When one of my students fell in the dam, I did not give up on that child. I told them, this is your moment, you know. This is where you are now, and this is where you need to go. Here's the blueprint print how you can reach your destination. We have a blueprint for Avalon Park, and this is our moment. We have band instruments and modern, and modern auditorium to, to conduct plays. We have an artificial field for students to play sports. We have an opportunity to hire our next school leader. I appreciate your time and attention. Do not close that one on part. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate that. Uh, I'm the alumni of Avalon Park. Born and raised. Grandmother, great grandmother, mom, dad, uncle, auntie, cousin, so on and so forth. All my core friends come from there. Okay? Uh, right now, what we're doing as alumni and residents, we are calling every ego back home. Okay? We got a Facebook page with over 200 and some members within three days. Okay? We have an alumni association that's been going on on Facebook for the last 10 years. We have a picnic every year. Okay? Say that to say. Okay? What this community has done, we brought EPA down to the school today. We come up with a partnership with the Urban Theater to teach our school arts, plays, and everything else. We tend to meet with Columbia. Columbia College, they come down and teach, teach photo, uh, video, uh, video, digital, and audio, okay? There is a game plan in place for Avalon Park, okay? And it's community-wide. This is summer, we put sports systems back into Avalon Park Community Center, okay? We were out sports for about seven years. Now we have basketball, football, and baseball. This community is working, and we will not die, okay? Uh, we also want to partnership with any other school that might be underutilized. We got it home. Okay? Uh, we work as a community no matter what school we run. Okay? So, that's our piece. So next up we have Black. We're going to ask Boucher, Bradwell, and Brumell. You can begin to start lining up here, please, on the outside aisle. Good evening. My name is Kennedy Jackson. I am the president of the LLT at Robert A. Black. Robert A. Black Magnet School has always been a hidden gem on the south side of Chicago. We have many accomplishments. We are a Blue Ribbon School and recently we received a state award, spotlight award. But CPS says that we are a level three school. We have been, we were established in 1968. And Robert A. Black has always been a level one school. We are in the upper 80 percentile. And because we have not moved up, because CPS has not given us the facility to move forward. We were coming to the new building over 10 years ago. CPS has $300 million, million dollars in surplus. 
You were driving like a kid to sell more instead of holding us back tonight. I challenge the Skyway Network to fix the level three that you have placed Robert A. Black on. We are not a level three school. We never have been. To say you say that you you say that you align in common core with the state. How can that be when the state says that we are number one and CPS says that we are number three? <laughs> My name is Lucas Romain. I'm the community director for Robert E. Black. We don't get services here on the south side. There is a school on the north side that has a packing up underground for the teachers, a gym on the roof for the kids with a rooftop guy. Why can't we get those same type of facilities here? We don't get services. Help our kids, help, help our kids so that we can have them go forward. We don't have any after school programs. Some of the kids, parents have to come out of their pockets to help. But we need to stop, please. Thank you. Public Schools website for this magnificent project. 
other projects include a food drive around the holidays and the Bags of Love project, which will be given to children that live in shelters on Valentine's Day. We, with all of this said, we believe that our school is a wonderful school that should remain open because we focus on the whole child. We expect excellence from all students, and we believe that we are an asset to our community. Please come and get some dogs and meet all of you. I'm good. No, I ain't saying shit like that. We have a faculty of things. Now, your school is going to slow out. You know how they're going to make you go back. I know. I I know. 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 I the children happy and satisfied by their beds. It's important to keep Caldwell open because the community needs the school. The parents need the school. And Caldwell should not be closed at all. <laughs> Cole. We have a speaker for Cole. The name for Dixon. Cole, the name of Dixon. Double. Making your way up front? No. Okay. Here heart. Here heart. Harvard. Hero. 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 Harvard. I'm coming to you as not only a parent, but a homeowner in the area. I'm a parent of five daughters, a homeowner for the last 12 years. I'm also one of the very first students from New York Europe. A lot of people don't realize that originally the school was open because of safety issues of the track. Everybody that was on Neil's part of the track was transferred out of Sullivan and placed there. Now the safety issue comes on to games, drugs. Okay, many of the people that don't come to the south side don't realize the problems that are on the south side. Just yesterday there was a person shot a couple of blocks away. I know I don't want my daughters having to walk through other areas that are as bad or worse. There are other children that are walking by themselves that have a couple of blocks to go, and that's dangerous enough. Now, I have two daughters that have graduated Ninos, then high school, they are going to college. Their base was at Ninos in the gifted program. My other daughter is in high school, also in the gifted program. My two little ones are in Ninos right now, in the gifted program. They have after school programs. These teachers take a value, a value in these children's lives. Sometimes this is all these kids in these neighbors, neighborhoods have are these schools. <laughs> We're not on the north side. We don't have the north side funds. We don't have the north side programs. We may be a little bit underutilized, if that's what they think, because we're not overcrowded on all of the classrooms. What do they want? The kids sitting on top of each other? <laughs> you put these kids in other, from one school into another school, it's going to be a disaster. You're going to have kids hurt. You're asking for problems. I don't know about anybody else. Well, actually, I do as a parent. I know nobody wants their child to be hurt. They want a good education. I got a good education. My daughters have gotten a good education thus far. So when you look, don't only look at little numbers. Look at lives.
Good evening, everyone, and thank you for the panel here to hear us all tonight. Uh, I am my name is Leon Emerson. I'm the chair of the LSC in New York. I think I've sat on the LSC for about seven years. In those seven years, I've seen the school, students, parents, faculty, and staff, all put on the same thing the world. They have all been diligent and effective advocates on behalf of our children. Their work, teachers, students, parents, and faculty, pulled our school off of probation. Their work pulled our, our students, our school into a better place where we were commended by the Illinois State Board of Education not two years ago for the impressive achievement done and seen in, in the school community, in the school scores, in the things the children in our school began to reach for. There was an, there was a clear client change that continues to mean us to this day. All of our numbers are impressive, especially compared to where they were. And that's a direct result of the people here, the mean those people here this after this evening, despite the weather, despite the late date, and despite the uncertainty. And I say uncertainty because despite the fact that we get commended, the same year we get notice that we have to lose teaching positions. The same year as the year before, and the year before, and the year before that, our enrollment is always undercounted. We are told we expect Nino's to have 430, or 402, or 416, and at the end of the year we end up with 407. Because we live in one of the most transient neighborhoods in the entire city of Chicago. Folks close down buildings elsewhere and they move to our neighborhoods. So we get kids in November and December and January and we take those kids and we teach them up. Because they're welcome to many of because they feel safe and secure there. Now I can see you and tell you how the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders at our school on the average are 80 to 90 percent math. I can tell you about all the numbers and all the great things. I can tell you about the gifted programs. I can tell you about ROTC. I can tell you about athletics. I can tell you how there are, that there are fewer and fewer problems on our campus. But I think the bottom line is this. We've got this crowd here, many of whom have been in the meeting for 10 years. And I think the fact that they're here tonight shows the level of commitment that these people have made on behalf of their children and mine and you. I thank you much. I can only say one thing. I want you to remember that we need to have the audacity to continue the hope to keep our kids safe and to teach them well. Give us our opportunity. Good evening, everyone. 